So what's the best way to protect your money in such an environment? Well, Philippe Bayerci helps oversee 100 billion Swiss francs as chief strategist at Banque Sarrazin, and he joins us live from Zurich. Philippe, thank you so much for joining us on the program today. First of all, I just want to get your sense of how concerned you were about volatility continuing on the markets, about, again, the EU leaders once again just being way too late to react to any of the news. And what, where do we go from here? Is the double dip recession now practically inevitable? Well, I think the recession is inevitable if we don't get any action fast, as you, you mentioned. If we don't see any uh, real progress in terms of the resolution of the euro debt crisis, and if we don't see any fiscal packages in the U.S., I think we can't prevent the recession. And uh, I think uh, the fourth quarter will be uh, very decisive. Uh, we need to see some action in the next one or two months, or it will be probably too late to avoid the recession. And what do we need to do here in Europe? The European Central Bank is meeting on Thursday, and it seems that investors are really split down the middle. Those saying that actually because of the inflation figures and the better than expected figures coming out of Germany next week, their hands are tied and the others still waiting for a gesture, either quantitative easing or at least an interest rate cut as soon as, soon as you know, next Thursday, this Thursday in fact. Well, uh, well, well, we uh, want the ECB to cut rates uh, this Thursday. I think that the inflation clearly is a lagging indicator, so it has not uh, a lot of relevance. But uh, if you look at the PMI data, the manufacturing data also coming out today is confirming that the, the European area is on the brink uh, of a recession. And in previous instances, with the PMIs uh, below 50, the ECB has actually cut interest rates. So I think from an economic point of view, there's absolutely no reason why not to cut. And uh, it's, it's maybe a political question whether Trichet will sort of announce that or hint at the cut uh, because it's his last meeting. But I think that was, would be the best thing for him to do, to actually already make the cut now and the bold cut by 50 basis points. And so in terms of your ideal portfolio, you're overweight on cash, but underweight bonds, very underweight on equities and lightly overweight on alternatives. So, so how do you actually break it up? Well, uh, we're clearly underweight risky assets, uh, which, which means in, in all areas, uh, in equities, in commodities, uh, also within the alternative assets, we're here underweight. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's really uh, difficult to find any asset which produces a return for the next uh, few months, so we prefer to stick in, in cash. Uh, we have uh, some money invested in total return products, which means selling volatility, structure some products which give you some extra yield, but I think it's uh, too early to really uh, jump into the market and, and catch the falling knife. We have uh, seen just over the last uh, two, two weeks sort of the last uh, stone breakdown with commodities and uh, cyclical assets in the emerging markets. So I think we need to wait and see how that unravels before really uh, getting interested in the markets again. And Philip, your latest report refers to a bloodbath in financials in the third quarter. And I just wanted to talk about their future in the light of this Bloomberg exclusive because we've learned that the New York Federal Reserve may ask foreign lenders for more detailed daily reports on liquidity. Sources, in fact, say that regulators have held informal talks with European banks about the so-called 4G reports. And these may cover potential liabilities such as foreign exchange and credit default swaps. And in fact, one person said that some Europeans are actually seeking U.S. Bank, uh, US banks advice on the report. So does this reflect fresh concerns about EU banks or is it just good governance from the Fed? Well, I think it certainly raises concerns about liquidity. It raises uh, concerns about sort of preparing for, uh, let's say, a Lehman-like effect uh, in, the, in the event of a Greek default. I think that's really what's behind it. I mean, the, the authorities want to uh, to make sure that this uh, can't happen again, and so they're sort of raising the the, the, the reporting requirements. And uh, clearly, it raises uh, stress in the financial system, and it, it sort of highlights uh, the need for a quick uh, resolution in terms of uh, the, the banking system in Europe. We probably need to see some recapitalization also quite soon as a part of a, a package by by the European uh, policy makers. So I think that's, that's all behind this and uh, it clearly raises the worries about the recession because if we continue to see uh, spreads uh, tied to financial conditions, then this has also an effect on the economy and uh, it will uh, deteriorate mm -hmm. probably even faster than it's already slowing now. But so overall, what is the worst performing stocks index that you see for the next six months, the one that you absolutely don't want to be in because you think that whether we have a recession or not is pretty irrelevant, it just won't perform? 
Well, I think uh, f for for the for the immediate the, the near term prospects, I think uh, clearly you should uh, stick away from from emerging markets. I think that's sort of uh, probably where uh, most investors are still hiding at the moment. We have seen some very negative performances, but this might continue. But I think in in terms of we're more concerned about the, the short term outlook, like the, the next uh, few months on a six to twelve months horizon. We actually see some uh, potential, particularly also in Europe. I mean, the European market is extremely cheap and if we see a resolution to the uh, to the problems if we uh, see the economy stabilizing then uh, that could be a uh, very positive uh, particularly for the European uh, equity market all right thank you so much for joining us Philip Berchi there chief strategist at Bank Saracen